Hi everyone, welcome back again to another episode of Paper Pioneer Live here from Firestorm Games in Cardiff. We have with us Raktor Sacrifice versus Bring to Light. Bring to Light, local player who likes to play the Niv Mizzet version, um, included all the most recent Niv Mizzet dragons when using Bring to Light to come and pick up a card to play for spell as a bit of a toolbox. Um, they're up against uh, another local player playing Raktor Sacrifice. Jay, thanks for coming to join us today. Let us know what you know about this build. Well, it's kind of racked as mid-range, but they they lean more into the sacrifice element with Mayhem Devil, Cat and Oven, pretty much basically what you expect from yeah. the Rakdos colors. Pretty solid archetype um, in the meta. Um, has split the Rakdos meta game share pretty much down the line, um, both looking at around about 8% of the overall meta when you look at most top uh, sites. Um, just pinging away and constant ability to remove is really high um, value in this meta at the moment. And they're getting underway. Um, what kind of movers and shakers are we looking at for the turn here? Like the difference is going to be early early ovens um, getting that engine going. Versus so for Ra Raktor's sack, they they got to get it. They got to get in there early with the damage. They they got to be able to drop cats, drop ovens, drop blood tide harvesters, drop fables, and they need to attack. Because Bring to Light, if the game goes long, Bring to Light should win. They've got Life Gain, which is perfect against Sacrifice. And they've got endless ways to refill their hand time and time again with, you know, various Bring to Lights and Niv Misses. Sure. So um, we have seen probably one of their better starts, other than there already being a cat on the board. Um, getting the oven down is huge and important. Um, and there's the Fable, you know, just a great card still. All, all, all the debaters, all the haters... Um, get a sh we get a goblin shaman down. We start making treasures. We start making pieces of game objectivity. And um, again, we love to see the um, unique goblin shamans that are around. Magic players will, pen will spend 15 to 20 quid on a land, but we won't spend five pound on a physical token. Obviously not. Those tokens are way overpriced. Um, here we might see a colligan land. Just because, you know, it's a good chance to get some value out of it. You make them discard a card, deal two damage to the Goblin Shaman, stop, you know, stop the life loss early, stop the treasure token making. It's not not that bad of an idea. Sure, they, they get a treasure out of it, but whatever. Yeah, I, I, I like I like that idea. That's, that is the um, way we would have gone. Um, they've placed um, Croxa into the graveyard here. So uh, that's a threat that... Roxa is not that scary against Bring to Light just because Bring to Light's main removal spell is Leyline Binding. Sure. Oh, and here we see an odd one, Thrill of Possibility. It's not a card you see very often nowadays, but ditching a Fatal Push doesn't do much against Bring to Light, admittedly anyway. Fills up the graveyard and brings them two brand new cards. Yep. Just the engine oh, start. That? Thrill of possibility. What was that? No, what did no, they play? What, 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 what happened is this the second chapter of Fable. Um, so oh my god, it. it was. Sorry. Just ignore everything I just said. Um, I feel so I, stupid. No, that's fine. It's fine. It's been, you've been away. We've been away, Jay. We've been away. Everyone's yeah, I've, I've not seen a Fable in so long. I've forgotten what it does. I've forgotten how much value it gets you. So it's so, I, so sorry. That is a claim the firstborn and a Fatal Push in the graveyard. So two removal spells correct. that they don't need. And that is why Fable is so good, because it means you can play these cards that are good against some decks, and then you just stick them in the bin against the Absolutely. decks they're not good against. I think um, what we're seeing here, uh, well, we're seeing a thought seeds for starters, but so um, two we... bring to light. So there's definitely going to be a bring to light next turn. They've got the fifth land. They're going to go get Nif Mizzet, I, I presume, and I think once they get Nif Mizzet down, they re restock their hand. I think they're ahead. I, I don't think they can lose the game from that position. Yeah, even because the thing is, I think the general um, sacrifice player line here was um, fill up my graveyard and play my Croxer, copy my Croxer, and just like effectively keep control. Uh, um, sorry, not copy the Croxer, but like play the Croxer, keep attacking with the Croxer. Um, keep, but, they, but that ain't going to matter because the, the uh, Bring Time player is just about to um, flip the board state here, I believe. 
Yeah, I mean, if if, if Ragdoll Slack ever gets a Crocs route, you know, the discard isn't going to matter that much. Bring to Light is going to have a huge amount of cards in their hand. And Crocs are being a 6 6, you know, it, it can just trade with the Niv Mizzet if they want to. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I still think Bring to Light is ahead even with an attacking Croxa, especially because their removal spell, Leyline Binding, deals with Croxa so cleanly, and it's likely that they, they will find one in the next few turns. I tell you, absolutely enjoy the Lord of the Rings uh, match in basics. Like, a lot of respect for that. Um, here comes Bring to Light. Yeah, it really upset me. The, the Lord of the Rings lands, they don't make a map. They don't... They should all fit together and just make the the map, you know, the well, whole map. Like their own but scene, they, right? Like, 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 uh, they're all at different zooms on the Lord of the Rings map, so you can't really, you can't really make the map out of them. And I, I think some have the other part of the map just in the map as well. It's just way more zoomed out for one of them. Yeah. Disappointing. What's, Disappointing. What's the if you're listening, do better. Um, what are we taking? Uh, Assassin's Trophy, Dreadborn, Deafening, Clarion, and another and Bring to Light. light. Yep. Yeah, so, so this is just why Nymph is, is so good. You get to chain Bring to Light. You just fill up your hand, and it's all good stuff as well. Sure, it has to be multicolored, but there's a lot of good multicolored stuff. Yeah, Ooh, you, you do. Ragdoll Sack writing it down like it's gonna matter, like they stand a chance. Well, you know, they they got it, they got they got to uh, find the edges here. Um, but yeah, you look at that and think, what well, what's my line to be back I, on board? I, th here? I think they just drew another claim, the firstborn, which is about the most useless draw they can have. I, I think this Ragdoll Sacrifice deck is well positioned in the meta. However, you know, the meta is not Niv to light. No, so absolutely. We're seeing a weakness here. I wonder how much they have in their sideboard to deal with uh, Niv's light. What one thing that would be really good against Niv's light? Invoke despair. It would be incredible, but like, like you say, not not a not a card you like we're likely to see. Um, Agreed. Off that bit, off that basis that it's not meta, like like. We all know, we all know my my little pet deck of the Light Pause Always deck. At a certain time in a meta game, it's the absolute most unbeatable gem because of hexproof. But most of the time, you can deal with one one else. Yeah, I I, I think Ragdoll Sacrifice. If they maybe they didn't know what matchup they were going into, but personally, I feel like you've got to mulligan aggressively until you get an aggressive starting hand you know to chain like a thought sees blood tithe fable because you, you just have to kill them quickly i mean mm -hmm. they can hit with hive every turn for the foreseeable future potentially but uh, it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna kill bring to light fast enough and they're gonna be able to just get out more stuff i i guess they've got an assassin's trophy for the hive actually Oh, they have. They they could they could um, fable copy the hive, right? It's not legendary. Uh, yeah, but if you copy a man land, it becomes a land. Right. Okay. So yes. it's, it's, it's not activated. Good. Yeah, good it's show. a it's, it's a really funny thing to watch on arena, and your opponent copies an activated hive, and you know they get a land. One time. Because... Here is that Nif is supreme. This is another five five flying five five. Um, hexproof from multicolor, so they cannot dreadborn this card. Um, and uh, no, sorry, hexproof from mono monocolored. Mono or multi? Mono. It's monocolored. Monocolored. Well, even better for uh, getting rid of go to go for the throats, I, I think. I just I don't think Ragdoll Stack has anything to get rid of it. They just they just assume that they're not going to be playing against these huge creatures. Um, and now Bring to Light's whacked in the red zone for six. They can attack next turn for 11 in the air, bring Ragdoll Sack down to one. And I, you know, I just think it's the end for Ragdoll Sack. In fairness, Ragdoll Sacrifice has gotten very mana flooded. I presume they don't play that many lands because usually Ragdoll Sack doesn't. And, you know, they, they've got more lands than they have drawn spells. Yeah, it's extremely unlucky.
to 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 be flooded out further than the bring to light deck is is not an expertise not an expertise out to come here so uh just just trying to make inroads and i think you know they can't make blocks so uh they go into one if they achieve nothing here um well, effectively so i think they just wanted to use an extra card because they want to get uh crocs for out next turn yeah so, I see. so they used a claim which is quite quite an interesting tactic you know it does work Next turn, they'll be able to Croxer. They, cro guess... they Croxer, hope they discard for three. Yeah. Uh, mm, this, no. Uh, it, there's not really any route. I mean, they go down to one. Basically, they need to deal 11 damage in the turn. If they had a more aggressive start, they genuinely might have had a chance to to kill them before the Niv misses. Oh, but now, now we see it bring to light. Sure. Um, I'd love to hear well, the. I'd, I'd I'd love to hear the thought process here on 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 the basis of did what did they feel their out was. But I think sometimes in game one you you like to play it out to see more cards. You like to play mm -hmm. it out to, to mm -hmm. see to see the outcomes. Um, but yeah, this game this, this this game this game one is over. Um, what Ooh, kind of a... oh oh they're, so they're fable passaging getting another land which triggers omnath adds four mana so they now have six mana that they can use this turn on a spell are they gonna bring to light again what are they what are they gonna do they've got a dread ball they might just oh they've got a deafening clarion i'm surprised they didn't play, just play the deafening clarion uh pre-combat to gain 11 life uh, we've said it. We said it, and I know it's, we've said it previously. Lightning Helix being being legal here. Would I be think. Spot on. I think it's it's not that unlikely of a reprint eventually. You can see in historic wizards is afraid of lightning bolt banning it immediately, but they're okay with lightning helix in the format. I mean, it, it's effectively lightning strike, but it gains you a bit of life. But you have to play. You know, you have to play white, which not a lot of decks want to do. They don't want to play white and red because you usually want another color in there. You know, it's usually Jeskai that would want these kind of things. And you know, three color decks, they need they need the extra love. Absolutely. Um, any answer from Bring to Light to win the game on the spot? Um, I don't think so. I don't think anything can deal one damage. There was oh, an Elish command. Norn. Colligan's command. Deal two to face. Okay, just 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 a casual Valky. Yeah, deal. But you're right though. Get Colgan's command. Yeah, deal two to base. Um, yeah, to play Tibble. Tibble. Can that kill them? But yeah, Colgan's command would have won on the spot, and they actually they went past it, which is a funny thing. Just uh, I think there was just a, a thought process there about um, the legality of what they're doing here, but obviously again, it's you. you uh, you can play either side of the card for free. So um, here we go. They're going to X at the top. I do wonder sometimes when we watch these camera matches, do the players um, actually do the, fan the the flashy play for the moment? <laughs> potentially. You never know. That would have been, would have potentially been a call. Um, he's going to tap and draw. I think that's just game. I think bring to light. They could have won with Colligan command, but I, I don't think they were actually thinking about winning that turn. They were thinking about I want to get all of my fun stuff on the board, <laughs> and I want to show them that my deck is awesome, and I've got you know Elish Norn Tibalt. And I also and know Omnet. how I also know how the how triggered the commentators are going to be about the smoke side of that land, uh, the smoke side of that Tibalt. Um, on, on the inner sleeve but um all good there i'm really not sure about the bring to light plan um they may think about but again bringing in fry because you're always worried about shouldered rest in peace of course fry fry for shouldered oops shouldered isn't white or call. blue <laughs> bad call on there yeah. it, it wouldn't be so, fry so it looks like they're bringing in deafening clarion and rest in peace you know rest in peace obviously you bring that in deafening clarion 
both modes are great. This sort of matchup usually ends up in a race eventually, so the lifelink is great. And it, it's usually a one-sided sweeper, the Clarion, and I think it kills everything on the Raptor Sack player's side. Uh, they're choosing to take out a Supreme Verdict, Unmoored Ego. I'm a bit surprised by the Verdict. I would have thought that would have been a good one. You still, you, you still want to have a sweeper, right? I think like multiple sweepers here win yeah. the game. Well, because I mean, the ideal scenario for any control player, I know Vince Light is not effectively a control, but they want to stall the game long enough, is to play a sweeper on turn three. And then, you know, the other, the opponent goes, I've seen the sweeper. I'm going to play out the rest of my hand now. And then you get another sweeper on turn four or five. And it, it's, it's just backbreaking for the creature decks to deal with. Absolutely. Like, I really hope the, the pivot we'll see from the Raptor Sack deck here is to go um, into the element of I need to go, I need to go fast. I need to play aggro almost. A bit like yeah. um, the way the standard Raktos deck, um, Raktos midrange deck was used to play, like incredibly aggro y. Um, um, and sometimes even a turn one creature, turn two creature, you know, like. Yeah, and, I, I and think. Cur I, I think, cur curve into invoke the space. Agreed. I think not just aggro though, but they definitely want to go for hand disruption. I reckon they're going to be mulligan, as we can see. They're already taking one mulligan because they they have to have the turn one thought seize. Maybe not even turn one. Uh, I feel like in this sort of matchup, you can actually thought seize on turn three and try Absolutely. and prevent them from casting the bring to light. You know, and that way you get to see more cards because it's unlikely that bring to light gets to play that many cards before them one thing we've not seen from drink to light and i think it's a huge question mark why we haven't seen them why is it not in the deck list growth spiral absolutely yes we haven't seen growth spirals um, yes i don't know i don't know whether we've just not seen it or if it's truly not in the deck list but i think it's odd that they're choosing to play sylvan carry added four of and not for growth spiral as well because growth spiral is arguably the better card than Sylvan carry at it because you do want to to get the extra lands down. Here's a much better start. Um, the Blood yeah. Tide Harvested down on two. Um, a dangerous creature, but also an effective removal creature as well. Um, I, I think uh, I may have seen another sideboard card. It looks like there's an extin extinction event in Bring to Light's hand. I, I believe that will be a sideboard card. I can't imagine that main board. So maybe that's why they took out the verdict because they're bringing in two sweepers in Clarion and Extinction Event. Sure. Um, but here is really the god oh. start. <laughs> no, and the worst start for Bring to Light, a turn three Sylvan Carry added with no land drop or oh, and oh, oh, thought seeds. Everything is going right for Ragnar Sack at the moment. Yeah, this is huge. I almost think that Bring to Light should have mulliganed further. Two lands in your opening hand, I feel like that's not enough. I know they're on the draw, but th this deck requires a lot of lands. They must play probably like 25, 26 lands just because they, they have to draw into those lands. They cannot be stuck on you know less than five lands because then they can't play that Haymakers. Yeah, and the vanishing verse I don't think is actually the right um, thing to keep because the creatures, the creatures on the Vactor side are um, all uh, multicolored. Like, yeah, you, know. you can you can hit a cat, you can hit a fable before it flips even. But yeah, vanishing verse, you know, it, it's okay, but it doesn't feel the best. They they've got enough removal here, but I, I don't know what their plan is to play another Sylvan Caryatid next turn. Maybe it was just the idea that I yeah I want to queue into four, but I, I'm yeah I agree. I think I think Mulligan was the right play. Would have been the right play. Um, this is a lot of damage coming in now. Um, they're essentially on a two turn clock. Oh, yeah, I mean they've they've technically got what a blood token, and then two they've got. Sorry, I think they've got they've got three damage from sacrifice effects that they can use if the Mayhem Devil sticks around. So the opponent's effectively at eight life and they can deal five damage through their creatures. So it's not looking good for the Bring to Light player. And Possibly again- Possibly Dreadborn, maybe, I don't attempt this. There's gonna be some attempt here for removal, right? 
Yeah, gonna have to remove the Mayhem Devil. There might be a, like a village rights or something in hand, but but you have you have to go for it. You have to get rid of the Mayhem Devil because it can just deal so much damage through any blockers or anything. And here we see how slow the. Oh, I don't understand why they're always tapping the Sylvan Caryatid. Potentially the uh, Triome is not black or red. I don't recognize it. Do you know what trium that is? The one in the middle? Is, is that Ken Ketri trium, I believe? No, I don't think that's Ketria. Oh, oh Zan yeah. Zan Zana Zana Green Trium. I'm um, not sure. In the middle that's the uh Zan Zan Goth Trium, which is black, green and blue. Yeah, so it's black. And what's the one on the right? The one on the right is the Endatha. Oh, I see. So they couldn't actually... Okay, so they couldn't cast Red Ball without tapping Sylvan Carry at it. That's why they did that. Yeah, right, catch... that's fair enough then. Yeah. They didn't have the red. And they just play another Sylvan Carry. The, oh, these Triumph decks so are just slow. too... The, these Triumph decks are too big brain for me, Jay. I literally would go triply slow if uh, <laughs> I had to think about mana tapping with all these different options. I just... Nah. I need... Is it I need? Is it green? Is it white? That's about all I can... Uh, can muster... <laughs> Yeah, it, so we see an Assassin's Trophy on the Blood Tithe Harvester. They've sort of stabilized a little bit. You know, they've gotten rid of the two threats. I feel bad for the Ractor Sacrifice player. I really do think they've been hard done by again. Three ovens is not really what you want to see. <laughs> However, a single cat right now would just chain off very, very well. Oh, they don't seem very happy with their draw. Very, very aggressive. Uh, bring it to the hand there. I, yeah, I think they realise that they're running out of time, that they, they have to win soon. Uh, and, you know, there's not really anything for them to do. Ooh, five months? What are they playing? Oh, Gigantha. Oh, Gigantha. They put Gigantha in their hand. I, I totally missed that. So they take, they've essentially taken two turns off, right? They they, they, they Gigantha the hand last turn. Um, they, they play Gigantha here. Um, do, do you think you just bring to light, go get Nifm, is it? refill your hand, have a 6-6 six, six blocker that they're probably unlikely to be able to deal with. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's absolutely the way. Um, I, I I don't think there's many outs for Ractor Sacrifice if you do the, the Niv to Light and go get Niv Mizzet. Because they, they would have to remove your Niv Mizzet, attack with Gigantha, Gigantha, and then deal one extra damage. I, just, I don't think that they can do that. They're stopping on Elish Norn. No, um, are they afraid of the cat? Because it stops the cat. Potentially. Potentially. Because that would be something to be worried about. It is the right size blocker for Gigantha. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't kill Gigantha, which is a shame. Yeah, well, do you know what? Elish Norn, it might be the safer play, but I, I think it might actually be better than Niv Mizzet because it stops the cat, which it was, you know, one way that you could lose. Because the cat would come down and instantly deal four damage with the ovens. True, and they haven't they haven't dismissed it in hand, so they're not too far away from casting. I, I believe... Oh yeah, that is the that is an infamous hit. I, uh, the art looks so similar. I find that art is so similar to the protection from monocolored one. Yeah, incredibly close, right? And, and they've got the same mana cost. It's really hard to tell them apart. So um, taking a fatal push. Do they have a creature in hand? Because fatal push can't kill anything at the moment. Uh, maybe they've just. I mean, Vanishing Verse doesn't do that much either, I guess. I think uh, Ragnar Sacrifice knows that the uh, the writing's sort of on the wall here. Yeah, they, they really they really need a Cat of Unchain in a turn. It, because... it doesn't do anything. Elish Norn. <sighs> it's yeah. an ETB. So they... Yeah. yeah. I don't think they can remove Elish Norn either. They, they basically need... Um, Mayhem Devil and to be able to sacrifice a load of stuff. And Maybe to be so, miss it. to be totally fair, we we didn't instantly see it, but um, Elish Norm was the great pick. 
like a really a really good pick there and a really yeah. great a really Although, great one-off i think if they were i don't know what's in their hand but they could have played a little bit more safely if they had i don't know some way to gain life rather than playing the niv miss it just because i they might be dead or close to dead just from a mayhem devil coming down true that it that, that has to be a concern for sure Um, so, yeah. so do you think, think they of... drew a cat? Do you think they drew a cat? I, I <laughs> yeah. looked at Alex Norman and it's like, oh, crud. Oh, no, it's, 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 it's a mayhem devil. devil. I, don't, I, I don't think they've won. No. But, but uh, they can deal, what, three damage directly now by sacking the sack food? They can sack the food. Oh, no, they can deal four damage. They can put two creatures in ovens and then sack another food. Um, it's okay. seven. It's seven damage on Alistair as well, which is like the yeah, like it's not so hard. Like so, so you do you don't deal with it in any shape or form. You're gonna end up taking six next turn. Um, oof, this is this is a hard decision here because you you can think about living. You can think about trying to to re re uh, re up yeah, your life I, total. I, I, how much damage is coming back? Five plus four, nine damage is coming back. No, sorry, five plus six, four plus six, ten damage. So they'll be at one life. I don't know why they're untapping the the lands that they use to play the Mayhem Devil. But it, that's how I, I think. I think they might be deciding whether to tap Gigantha to cast the Mayhem Devil. Because um, then well, they would be able to maybe attack with Hive, but attack with Hive doesn't really do anything. I mean, or, or from where Hive? I'm... For, ooh. From where I'm standing, they can deal four damage right now and put their opponent down to. Obviously, that would wipe their board. But I think they can potentially... Hold off for one more turn, attack with everything, and then sacrifice enough to get the last few points over the board. However, would... that that plan completely falls apart when you realise that Bring to Light is just going to gain ten life next turn by playing a Deafening Clarion. That's also going to kill the Mayhem Devil. Or, or you attack with Giganta. They're going to have to block somewhere, right? Because if they if they let it through, you sack and win. They, they've 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 passed the turn. But you attack with Giganta. Yeah. They got to block. If they block with either of the creatures. You then oh, do, do you know what you're right yeah you, you, do, your, you, you do your sacking and and, you, and then you could probably do they're gonna probably block with elish norn right so then you just you do two damage to elish norn um and then you, you still have oh, to draw no, the top. no 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 the sacking doesn't work out you would have to sacrifice the mayhem devil as well which just isn't worth it is it no oh yeah you would because you'd have to get yeah because you could sacrifice the food and then you would have to sacrifice one more thing uh, we oh, see right. another bring to light i wonder what they're gonna go get uh, dread, dread Omnath. Ball. Omnath, gain four life. Oh yeah, you're right. Dread, dread ball wouldn't be that bad. They've got a lot of choices. Is that the other Niv Mizzet? What is uh, that? Oh, Tolsmir. Tolsmir. Friend, friend of wolves. Friend of wolves. Oh, sorry, friend to wolves. Okay, so so you gain three life, and the three three wolf is gonna trade with the mayhem devil. So yeah, uh, actually, a pretty decent draw. Yeah, three three wolf. Um, I think that's stabilization complete. Ooh, Ooh they get they get two wolves. Because of the double Alice Stone trigger. Yeah, and, and both of them trigger, so you actually gain six life. Wow, that's big brain, big brain time. So and do they both get to fight something. So do you kill Gigantha or do you kill Mayhem Devil? I, I don't think I don't think you I don't think you kill Gigantha. I think I Mayhem agree. Devil's Mayhem Devil's the potential threat, right? You're gonna fly over the top in two turns, so Ooh, it looks like they might have missed the um, the trigger. 
Uh, oh, the unless fight they, trigger. Unless they target, they, unless they targeted Mayhem Devil with the fight trigger. And no, this but, is but, all but, no, because the um, Raptor Sacrifice player put them down a life from the. I think it was from the Legend Rule Sacrifice, right? Because those three three wolves are legendary. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Well. <coughs> yeah. Oh no. Well, that that just. Oh, oh, oh no! That looked, like a, that looked like that looked like a scoop, but I, I think they were gonna scoop, and then they were like, oh, "Let me draw one more card." But <clears throat> I don't think they can deal nine damage. Okay, what is that's that? the. That's um, the card from March Machines where you sack a permanent as part of the cost and you can destroy a creature of Planeswalker or you pay four instead. So they're paying the whole lot, I guess. Um, something glare? Um, Annihilating glare. Annihilating glare. So are they going to sack an oven? And I mean, I... They're barely holding on here, regardless of what they do. I'm surprised they sacrifice the food, because the food is three life. It was actually a card that kept them alive, but that's a lot of damage coming back, right? So Yeah, I, I think they should have they should have kept the food, gained three life on the food. If they're looking to just I don't know, hold on for as long as possible. It makes you think, though, why don't these Ragdoll Sack decks play one, what is it, light up the stage? No, light up the night. Wow, yes, absolutely. Because they play they play Obdixus now, right? Those These decks do, so... It, it, that, that, is, that is... There is sometimes also the Planeswalker available. Is yeah. this, uh, this enough? So we see Hive trading with Tolsmir. Take... I don't know. But they would still take attacking. seven, right? Oh, and then they sacrifice the hive to make a food, and then they play the food, and they go to one. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, you have um, to admire that they will keep on playing, for, but I, I don't think there, there are any outs for them. No, I, unless I, they I, had me, me, me cut massacres. They I, put a good I think game. The, the chances are just stacked against them. Their deck is not prepared for bring to light. We saw the it. Early on, they had the god start, really, back to sacrifice, you know. They had the thought seeds, they had the blood tide harvester, they had the mayhem devil, and they, they just still couldn't do it. And I think they they just can't interact well enough with what Bring to Light does, and Bring to Light just gains too much life and just rolls straight over them. Yeah, um just a fantastic meta call, I suppose, if we're we're pioneers currently at and uh you, you know you know, like you, you can't fault the play they've obviously built a real good toolbox and look forward to seeing it here more on the channel and seeing if wilds of Eldraine is going to help it um evolve at all um if you do want to pick up anything um from the wilds of Eldraine, you can support the channel the link in description we play all of our games at firestorm games in cardiff and you can go there and you can get um with free shipping all the wilds of Eldraine deck boxes anything you want even if you want warhammer we, we won't judge you go ahead and buy it it supports the channel um, any last words, Jay? No, nope, that's all from me. Great, everyone. Well, yeah, we'll see you all next time on the channel and uh, bring you more uh, Paper Pioneer Live. Thanks a lot. That's like the antip... What's the, what's the word? Antip well, I don't even... There's a fancy word. Antipitate... What's that? That's what happens when you see a deck do its thing and a deck not do its thing, right? Like, that. that was... Agreed. Bring to light, bring to light in its finest. But uh, love, the, love the Elder Storm pick, the mother of all machines. Yeah, it was love a really card. good pick, and, I, and the gaining the life from Tolsmere and killing stuff that it was really well played, really well played from from them.